So as I'm sure some of you will have noticed, I've been doing a bit of woodworking here on the channel. Nothing too complicated, just a few cabinets and bookshelves. Now woodworking isn't exactly my domain, and I don't exactly have all the tools for doing it. So a few weeks ago, I made what is at best described as a scrub plane. It's mainly for breaking edges and cleaning up joins, and on the whole, it does a pretty good job at doing that. However, the sharpening on the blade leaves a lot to be desired. You know, the bench grinder I have is good for doing the coarse sharpening and shaping, and then I follow it up with a whetstone to give it its final edge. And that certainly does an okay job, but it can be a lot better. I appreciate that there are jigs out there to help you get more consistent results. I'm certainly not the best, and I'm sure getting nicer stones would help me too. You know, these are just cheapo $5 stones. But if this isn't the perfect excuse to get my hands on a whetstone grinder, well, I don't know what is. And considering it's been on my list for a very long time, I'm certainly going to jump at that opportunity. If you don't know what a whetstone grinder is, they're effectively just bench grinders, just a lot slower. My bench grinder spins at about 3000-ish RPM, whilst a whetstone grinder runs, you know, maybe 100. Plus the stone has a tub of water that the stone sits in, and that helps lubricate the stone and it keeps the heat down. Remember, with the carbon steel, it's really important to keep the heat down whilst you're grinding it, because with carbon steel, too much heat is going to soften the steel, and that's going to effectively ruin the blade. At that point, you either grind away the softened section, or you heat treat it again. They also come with special jigs to help you grind a consistent edge, and that's going to be a lot better than what is offered by my current bench grinder. Now price-wise, I could pick one of these up for a bit over 200 bucks. You know, that's a pretty good price, but because I want to, I think I'd rather make it myself. And I think I might be able to make it a bit more compact than the off-the-shelf versions, which, given the small size of the workshop, is going to be a good thing. So let's start off by making the frame. I have a box of these steel offcuts, which I picked up a while back. They're a half inch by three inch plate, and I think I can make a basic and solid frame out of them. The first thing I'll do is I'll clean up the ends. I don't have any inserts for the fly cutter at the moment, so I'm going to leave the mill scale finish as it is, at least for the moment. Now for the bottom plate, I'm going to mill in a small slot at each end, and this is going to be so I can eventually bolt the thing to a workbench. And I'll finally get six holes drilled and then counterboard so I can screw everything together. If you really wanted to, you could weld it all together, but I don't want to risk the steel warping, so I think screwing it is going to be the best bet. And that's going to be our basic frame. It's a bit more blocky and basic than the off-the-shelf model, but that's DIY for you. And anyway, it's going to be a grinder. It's going to do the job that I need, so aesthetics kind of come in last. Next, I'll get a hole made for some bushings, and that's going to be for the main shaft. I'll first start off by pilot drilling up to 13 millimeters.
I'll then swap over to a set of deming bits, which now thankfully work since I've reground them. And I'll finally use the boring head to take the hole to its final size and get a better surface finish. And that is going to be the frame done for the moment. Next let's take a minute to think about the actual internals of the grinder. What we need is a shaft that goes all the way through it that allows us to bolt the grinding wheels on each side. We'll also need a way to spin it and we need a way to spin it at roughly 100 rpm although we can have a little bit of leeway on each side. Now looking at it there's no definitive way of doing this you know there's several combinations of motors and gearboxes that would work. But I'm choosing to go with the classic approach, which is using a worm drive that's connected to a very basic DC motor. This DC motor to be exact. This is a 12 volt 80-ish watt motor. It spins somewhere in the region of about 5 to 6,000 RPM. I forget exactly where it comes from, but my best guess is it's from that $40 wood lathe that I bought a few years ago. I think 12 volt is a good choice for this because we are going to be using it near water so in the unlikely event that it does get wet it's not going to be all that dangerous. The thing is though by itself it's way too fast for what I need but once I hook it up to a worm drive I can easily cut the speed down to about 100, 120 rpm and obviously at the same time that is going to bump up the torque too. Now 80 watts is definitely as low as I'd want to go, but the thing is these whetstone grinders don't seem to require all that much power. I think the other one that I was looking at was about 120 watts, so I think we're in the ballpark for what we need. And at the end of the day I am going to be using smaller stones, I'll be using 150mm here, so I think 80 watts should be okay. Step 1 though is to make the worm gear. Previously I've made them from steel, but this time I'm opting to go for acetal which is very similar to the Powerfeed gearbox. And given the runtime and the load that I'm expecting of this, I think Acetal is going to be just fine. And I'll be using the exact same method that I've used previously to make the gear. So after making the blank, I'll gash out the teeth to half depth on the mill. I'll then use the free hopping setup on the lathe to complete the basic worm profile.
and overall they came out looking great. Except I forgot just how difficult it was to deburr acetyl, so I think I'm just going to leave it there. Now back on the lathe, I'm going to cut the worm screw using the 20 degree pressure angle cutter that I previously ground up. And with all that now cut, we can now focus on making the bushings for the shaft. My initial plan was to use ball bearings, or possibly some sort of sealed unit to keep the water out, and that's going to be complete with gaskets, but I can probably achieve the same result by using some plain bearings and a bit of grease to create a very basic seal. And if you don't believe me, you'll find the exact same setup in a lot of the off-the-shelf models, so if it's good enough for them, it's going to be good enough for me. And once again, I am going to be using acetyl for the plain bearings. I would have preferred to use nylon, but I think acetyl is going to work just fine here. With the bushings now made, let's make the shaft. And for that, I have a piece of stainless of unknown grade and unknown quality. It's definitely 300 grade because it does pass the magnet test, but that's about it. It's also not 316, which is nice because I don't exactly like machining 316. It's also not perfectly round, which I thought would be okay, but that's going to be a bit of an issue a bit later on. First things first though, we need to machine each end so we can mount the grinding wheels on it and I'm simply going to copy the dimensions that are on the bench grinder. You know again, if it works with the bench grinder, it's going to work here. Now to help it self tighten, one end is going to have reverse threads, which I'll have to single point cut. I don't exactly keep a reverse thread M12 tap on hand. I'll then get it cut to length, and then the other side will get the exact same step down, except with a normal thread.
Only other difference though is I accidentally made it a little bit too small, so it's M10, not M12. I'll also add a grub screw so I can hold the shaft in place as I tighten the locking nuts. And with the build now coming together, we now need a way of holding the motor in place. The motor itself already has mounting holes, so all I need to do is make a mounting bracket. With the motor now screwed in place, we can now mark out the location which I need to screw the bracket in place. And for obvious spacing reasons, I am going to have to hold the motor at an angle, although it doesn't really affect the overall performance of the worm drive. I'll then get a hole drilled for a screw. And thankfully that now lines up quite well. And because the motor bracket can now pivot around that screw, I now have some room for adjusting the worm to get the meshing just right. Now the final thing left to do is to get the worm gear firmly connected to the shaft. Initially, I was simply gonna hold it in place with a grub screw. You know, I have done that before, but that's generally with things that aren't made of plastic. I think if I was gonna do that, the risk of simply splitting the plastic was gonna be way too high. I could, if I really wanted to, just use a woodruff key, or maybe even two, but I think in this instance, it's just gonna be a lot easier if I keep it as simple as possible, and I simply weld it in place. Now by doing it this way, the whole of the inside surface is gonna be doing the holding, and that's gonna better spread the load around that entire surface. All right, so I've given it a day to dry and harden up, so let's see if it works. And I think that's working out quite well. Most importantly though, the speed of the shaft is much lower than it was before. I'm not sure what the RPM is at the moment, but it will definitely slow down a little bit further once I add all the stones and the bath of water. Now I definitely can see some movement in the worm screw, you know, partly because 
I think the push fit that I made is a bit loose, so that is going to be addressed further on. But also because the worm screw is only supported at one end. You know, supporting it at both ends will be better, and that's the proper way to do it. But I'm not sure if I have the space to add the support at the end, at least at the moment. It's not the best design practice, but it's certainly not unheard of. And given the low runtime that this machine is going to get, at least relatively, I think we should be okay in just leaving it like this. Apart from that, I'm pretty happy with it. And you know, that's going to be about it for this week. You know, the internals and the frame are for the most part done. So next week, my plan is to get the stones mounted, the guides and jigs made, and hopefully we can start to sharpen some tools. Till then, thank you very much for watching. See you next week.